Welcome back to AgriTalk. It's opening day of World Pork Expo here in Des Moines, Iowa. We're very happy to have with us the president of the National Pork Producers Council, Doug Wolf from Wisconsin. Neil Dirks is also with us, CEO of MPPC. A lot to talk about. Doug, let's uh, kick it off. I was just asking you, do you think the mood of producers and of the industry is as upbeat as it was a year ago when we saw a dramatic improvement? And you think overall, even with the challenges producers are still facing, that overall it seems to still be a more more upbeat than we saw, what, three, four years ago? Yeah, I, I would have to say that I would agree with that statement. Uh, for one thing, we've, we just got through with a, a good spring, fantastic spring, some good profitabilities. Um, there a lot of people have done some uh, management work, forward contracting, and locking in some good profits. So they've, they've had a good, good spring. Uh, we're looking forward. We've got the uh, FDAs uh, coming up. That's uh, exciting news that we're, we're hoping will be passed by fall. So there's a there's a number of other good positive things coming forward. Now there are some things that are optimistic or to be concerned with. You know our feed availability. The markets have slipped a little bit, but uh, I think overall there's a lot of optimism. We will talk. Uh in the next segment about some of those challenges and issues. I want to focus just for a moment on the free trade agreements. How frustrated are you that they're kind of being held up now? The political tug of war that I call it back and forth between the, both the parties uh, kind of leaving the free trade agreements hanging there for the moment just when it looked like we were about to finally get some action and movement on them. Well, it, it has been a frustrating situation. This is something that uh, our organization specifically has been working on for nearly four years. It's been a long time coming. The agreements were made, then they weren't, and they were. And, and uh, this uh, past year, when the president decided he wanted to get these agreements done, get them passed, uh, got them wrote up, uh, we, we thought we were on a, on a ride in. And uh, of course, politics at its best, uh, about time you think something's going to go, somebody wants something for their votes. And uh, I, I think that uh, it needs to be done. I don't think it's a hurdle that can uh, that'll stop the situation, but it's just, uh, it's just politics. We'll talk more with Doug Wolf, president of NPPC, in just a moment. But I want to talk with Neil Dirk, CEO of the National Pork Producers Council. And Neil, the 23rd World Pork Expo, and it looks like you're full again this year. Hey, uh, crowds are looking good, even though it's relatively early yet on the first day. Um, the weather's holding off. It's a little muggy, uh, but it, again, it's the middle of summer in the in the Midwest. Uh, but so far, there are a lot of good crowds on the trade show floor, and uh, I was looking at the parking lot. Parking lot's... Uh, Got a lot of cars coming into it, so all in all, we're, we're set to go. What about international visitors? Do you have quite a few this year? Well, uh, we've had registrations from, I think, 33 different nations, and we'll have somewhere, it, it will range, we won't get a final count until after we're done with Expo, uh, but we're anticipating anywhere from 1,300 to 2,000. How would you say the focus of Expo maybe has changed or you've adjusted over the years? I mean, what, you know, you got to have education, you have promotion, you have breed shows and sales, you have a little bit of everything, but has the direction or the focus changed somewhat? Well, I think the major, the, the major difference of the Expo today versus 23 years ago is that a recognition that we're still, uh, we're still a, a, a showcase for the industry for people in the upper Midwest and we get non-producers in the upper Midwest come and enjoy and partake and as I think Doug said if you, if you don't get enough to eat at Expo then you're not, you're not walking around enough. Uh, but, but we've really made, a, made an effort to, to focus on those kinds of things that producers need to be successful in the future. Uh, and, and just as you said, Mike, it's things like educational seminars, it's, a, it's additional kinds of associated things going on with Expo. For instance, we had an overnight tour that the Illinois Soybean Association was a gold sponsor on, where we took people around the Midwest to show them uh, that, that weren't familiar with the Midwest, show them everything about agriculture in the Midwest. And we want to stay related to pork, obviously, but we also want to showcase agriculture here. Which is a big part of what the pork industry is doing now, Doug, uh, uh, through the We Care initiative, reaching out to consumers, working with the U.S. Farmers and Ranchers Alliance, things like that. Really, for all of agriculture, getting your message across, communicating to consumers is critical for everyone. Yeah, it's a, something that probably agriculture's uh, been guilty of not doing enough of. Uh, of just sitting back and doing our job. That's what we uh, that's what we enjoy doing. That's why we're there. Is we just want to be able to go out and do our job. But we found out that we've lost ground by not getting out and, and telling our story and being a you know, part of the public light. And so we're we're putting some major emphasis on getting back in it. As you mentioned, uh, 
the, the U.S. Farmer and Rancher Alliance to try out and uh, just get people to reacquainted with the agriculture again. And that challenge, I think, of uh, educating consumers may be even greater for animal agriculture than uh, other segments uh, because of some built-in perceptions and misperceptions in many cases, some issues to deal with there. All right, we'll take a break and come back with more with Doug Wolf, president of the National Pork Producers Council. Neil Dirks, good to see you. Wow, doesn't doesn't seem possible. It's been 23 of these. Yeah, I was going to say it. It's also it's always good to be seen too. So, <laughs> indeed, it is. Thank you very much. All right, it's day number one of World Pork Expo here in Des Moines, Iowa. A little warm, a little muggy, but still good weather. And supposed to be some rain, maybe move through and cool things off. Uh, the show runs three days, so if you're in the Des Moines area, come on by. We'll take a break. Come back, talk about some issues and challenges for the pork industry with Doug Wolf. Stay with us. This is AgriTalk. Welcome back to AgriTalk at World Pork Expo in Des Moines, Iowa. Doug Wolf is with us from Wisconsin, president of the National Pork Producers Council. Doug, there are some challenges certainly facing the industry. Price uh, concerns, uh, uh, you know, we've seen some improvement, but we've seen some um, concerns about maybe falling off a little bit there, too. So that's that's kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, we, we've uh, had some real optimism earlier. We had some, uh, we had four months that was over $100, you know, which was pretty exciting to see that. And uh, I'd say probably a large percentage or a lot of our producers took advantage of that and locked it in. So there was, there's going to be some good profitability in there. We've seen that fall off now of close to $20. Uh, and then it's rebounded a little bit here in the last week or so. Not really certain why, but uh, maybe that uh, the market's just taking a breather. They, they were a little too optimistic. Uh, they just want to make sure that it can actually function where it's at. I know you're concerned about feed costs and feed availability. Yeah, we've uh, we've always been one that's uh, been washing our feed costs, and we still do. I mean, that's a major cost of production, but uh, we've kind of changed our emphasis a little bit now. And uh, our big concern today is uh, physical availability. Um, right now, we're uh, close to a record uh, low carryover stocks. It'll be left over at the end of this year's crop. Um, we're concerned about regions that uh, may just run out of physical crop. So we got that. The biggest thing we're more concerned about is next year, you know. We've, we've started off, we had some good projections, USDA projected 92.2 million acres and a trend line yield. It was going to give us a, a little bump in the carryover, nothing extra, but a, a nice little bump. Well, as everyone knows, uh, weather hasn't been our favor. Mother Nature's kind of thrown us a curveball. We had late plantings, we've had some wet plantings, and of course now we've got flooding. So not certain where we're going to end up on uh, final supply. So that's a challenge. We mentioned the trade issues. Hopefully, uh, those will get get approved because exports have been a bright spot for you. Yeah, exports been our shining light. It always has been. Uh, it's helped us move to a lot of products. Helps us gain some value in it. So uh, we're we're really hopeful that we can continue that that movement. I want to bring Neil Dirks back in here, CEO of the National Pork Producers Council. Neil, have you seen an impact? on pork sales in this country due to the economy. Well, and that was one of the things I was going to put forth. Doug talked about that we'd seen some optimism in the markets. Um, I can't tell you that we've seen a huge impact at this point uh, because one of the things is this, this, this input cost shock that's been working its way through the chain is really right, right now at the retail level. And we'll know this summer because consumers are encountering it. Um, there's there's bound to be some pullback. Um, how much that is, we'll see. Now, our industry has contracted since three years ago. Uh, so we've, I mean, producers did what was necessary to get in a situation where they could break even. Um, so far, the reports are um, people are really concerned, but we haven't been able to tag it yet. And we're going to, we're in the grilling season now. We'll find out, um, and unfortunately, um, we are, we know where unemployment is in the in the world, and, and and the thing you know in the upper Midwest, things are reasonable, pretty much across the Midwest as far as economics. But you get to the coast, you get, see higher unemployment, uh, so everybody's holding their breath. And, and as Doug said, these free trade agreements are really critical for us to get pork moving overseas. Another issue, Doug, now that's come up, uh, a labeling issue in China that could uh, slow some of our exports into that market. 
Well, it's, it's relatively new. Uh, not certain that it's going to have a real factor on it, but uh, actually I'm going to have Neil address that. He's got a little better handle than I do. Well, first of all, uh, most of our exports to China right now are variety meats, things that aren't in great demand in the United States, which has really been good for our consumers. We have other markets in the world that demand products that we our consumers really aren't, aren't pulling. Um, with this specific one, uh, we're, we think the jury's out. We're not sure that this is going to have a huge impact. Um, now, if we had some other trade issues resolved and uh, we were sending more whole muscle meat into China, we probably have more concern right now. So something to watch, but hopefully will not turn into a huge issue. Neil Dirk, CEO of the National Pork Producers Council. Doug Wolf, President. Thank you both for being with us. Let's have a great expo. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. All right. We'll take our break. When we come back, we're going to talk with uh, Sam Carney, past president of the National Pork Producers Council, about the very controversial GYPSA rule. So stay with us. From World Pork Expo in Des Moines, it's halftime on Agritalk. <laughs> 